And it's bourbonblog.com live. Joining me from Colorado is Breckenridge Distillery's liquid chef, Billy Keithley, who, uh, who has always been uh, one of our very favorites in the business. She's very talented, and she actually just won Whiskey Magazine's Icons of Whiskey for Bar Manager of the Year. Congratulations on that, Billy, and uh, how's it going? It's going awesome, and thank you, Tom. It's so good to see you. Holy cow, it's been way too long, man. <laughs> it's been a long time. We've spent a lot of uh, fun times, whether it was uh, New Orleans to Colorado, uh, but uh, it just seeing the, seeing your name come lose this past week on winning that uh, Icons of Whiskey Award, wow. Uh, what, 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 what did you think when you, when you found out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, and actually, uh, you know, uh, Lich and you, you know, Lich and, and uh, yeah. Jesse that were calling me, and I I didn't have my phone on at the time, and I, I, did, I didn't know what to, I was like. Then I finally checked my phone, and I was like, what, What's going on? <laughs> so it was a, it was a super shock, and I, I cried, I smiled, I was like, Wow! So it's I love it. It's it's amazing. It is. A There's so much talent out there, and uh, I love I love it. So. It's a very it's a very high honor. Uh, whiskey magazine does uh, they do these icons of whiskey for all kinds of things, distilleries and bars, and you being bar manager. Did you know you were up for the award? What, was it a surprise to you? What was the? Uh... It, it it was a surprise. I know you know Jesse, our marketing director. Um, she told me something a month ago. She says I'm nominating you, and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. Well, thank you. So that was months ago. So. I mean, that's completely out of my head when this just happened. Right. So it was a, a, a shock. So it made it even more fun. Well, tell us what, uh, you know, and I, I I understand it and I understand all the talents you have, but you, you're called the liquid chef. Now, what, what some people use names, uh, bartender, mixology, you know, in the business, there's so many names that uh, that that are used. But what, what is a liquid chef? You know, this, the name stuck, um, I would say about 10 years ago, it was a, a co-worker. It actually might have, I can't remember exactly. I'm going to say it was Lich, but um, one of the things I came up with is if it's edible, I can make a cocktail out of it. And I, then it was blurted out liquid chef. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. And uh, that it went from there. So, I mean, there, there's been people who challenge me with, crazy ingredients and or I'll ask them to go to the store and say pick out three ingredients that are so random I don't care what it is I'll make something out of it because for me it, it still is a challenge of course always a challenge but you know years ago it was like oh cool I, I'm gonna take this this mix them together or you know <laughs> I you know fire this up and uh, chop this up and put it all together and see what happens because it all is experimentation when it comes down to it. Yes, uh, you were you were doing the chopped thing before chopped even existed. You've you've always been experimenting. You've been doing it all. Uh, I see a lot of great people. Aaron, thanks for watching. Lich just tuned in, so uh, thanks for uh, watching. Lich and all our friends there in Breckenridge. So I'm actually trying one of your cocktails right now. I know you have a lot of signature cocktails and. And we've tried some amazing cocktails you've made through the years. If, if only we could, if I could even remember a lot of them that uh, just been so good with, with both uh, the Breckenridge bourbon, but also with all of your spirits. I'm trying one right now made with the court, port cask finish. Uh, this wonderful bourbon from Breckenridge finished in port casks. And so the ability that you have to play with not only just the bourbon, but these, these cask finished bourbons that you all do so well, what's, what's that like? You know, for me, I feel very uh, fortunate, privileged that uh, I get to work with these spirits. They're they're top, top, top of the, everything. They're my favorite. Okay, uh, I I'm very fortunate. It's I get to just take each spirit that we have and almost take it apart in a way to balance the right cocktail that will make it so amplified, elevated. And uh, I, it's, I, man, it brings tears to my eyes. It's so cool, you know? Uh, there's so much unique things 
that are done with the blending at the distillery and with our make and, and it's, I love it. <laughs> so, well, I mean, and, these right out in front of me, the port, the sherry finish, I even have our rum cast finish in the background. And of course our flagship bourbon, I know you can't see, but, yeah. you know, I have that over here too. It's delicious. Just the original, I got a little tear to the Breckenridge, uh, Bourbon, you can tell, you can see how much we enjoy. This is uh, this is delicious stuff. Of course, that sherry cask finish. Uh, the new rum, the new rum is uh, is so so uh, tasty. Just with that that used rum cask that you put the bourbon into, and it just it's so nice. The rum cask, it's one of my favorites, and I've been with uh, Breckenridge Distillery for about you know eleven years now, 10, 11 years, I think. Um, I don't know. I drink a bit, so it could be. <laughs> And it seems like some years pass quicker than others. Uh, there's, I guess, there's a bit, a little bit of a debate uh, how quickly this past year has passed. But well, you know what? No matter what it is, uh, we're enjoying some uh, good cocktails. Tell us down below. I know there's a lot of Breckenridge fans watching. Tell us down below what your favorite uh, Breckenridge spirit is, and or maybe one of the cocktails you've had from Billy or from the um, the bar. You want to you want to show us how this one's made? Would you you want to do that now? Show us the the Ob One. Absolutely. That so, way we can, uh, and I'll just put it all on you here. That way you can, we can just get the, and then I'm going to sip and, and watch you do this. This is wonderful. Okay. So yes, this is the Obi Wan Old Fashion. Um, at the distillery, there's a, a lot of Star Wars fans. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so there's always going to be two to three Star Wars references on the Breckenridge Distillery restaurant menu. Um, our CEO is a huge Star Wars fan too. Um, but it would just, you know, if you, if you ever get to get, go to the restaurant, it's amazing because the artwork, you'll, you'll see all kinds of Star Wars references. It, it's really cool. So I always have to, and I mean, Obi-Wan, I mean, Jedi Master, ridiculous. So um, for the Obi-Wan, I start off with just about a half ounce, or not just about, actually an exact half ounce of the raw simple. And I'm putting that into a Yari or mixing glass. If you're at home and you just have a pint glass, that works great also. Um, and then I'm gonna use two and a half ounces of our port cask finish. And I, ugh, this port cask finish with the, the raw simple is just beautiful. This is one of my new little toys. It's a step jigger. <laughs> I just love it. Um, it's easy, easy, easy to read, and it's very old school and classic. So I have two and a half ounces of that. Um, and then I'm gonna use, this is my homemade bitters, but I'm just gonna do a few dashes of that. Now with bitters, you know, barrel-aged whiskey bitters is my favorite to use with this, but if you have an orange or apple, a smoked um, flavor profiles that are gonna enhance and uh, elevate this, um, you know, go for it. It's, it's, it's fun to play with. This is an old fashioned, so it's very spirit forward. Um, old fashioned cocktails were basically built because it's an old fashioned way to make a cocktail. You have your spirit, you have your sugaring agent and which I use the raw simple uh, syrup with and a bittering agent. And then your, your water, which we're going to use as ice. And I know there's so many different ways to make old fashions, adding soda different spirits, uh, it might be mezcal, brandy, whatever. Um, but it just, it's an old fashioned way to make cocktail, make a cocktail and it's so easy and it's just those four ingredients. From there, I add ice. I'm adding ice over here. All right, I'm gonna give this a nice stir. All this is proper dilution when you're stirring and executing proper, classic cocktails, okay? A lot of people stir 30 times one way and 30 times reverse. Um, if you really want to nerd out, I have a thermometer that is a stir and I can get the temperature of exactly what I want when I'm reading. You can do it both. What are you gonna do? <laughs> it's just, and then I am just gonna pour this right over a nice cube. Yeah. With that and then add a Luxardo or a brandy cherry. I'm a big fan of Luxardo. Okay. And then a huge, nice, healthy orange zest that brings this all come together because 75% of what you are drinking 
is all in the nose there, okay? And I'm gonna drop that orange swath right in there. You can smell it. Yeah. Mm. Just, oh, you smell the orange, it plays off the pork cast perfectly. Yes. So that Brett Cruz Distillery pork cast whiskey finish is just, oh man. It's it's the Obi Wan old fashioned. It's this is delicious. This is I mean it really what you've done to this um, with the spirit with your talent. Uh, you and you even made your own your own bitters, right? You make you make all your own any ingredients which you don't have uh, from Breckenridge. You make your own, right? Yes, uh, you know between bitters, shrubs, syrups, and it's it's definitely um, you know you you there's a lot of craft bars that do that, and it's it's fantastic. Um, for, for us, with the license for the restaurant with Breckenridge Distillery, we, we can't go out and buy different cordials and things like that. So in my lab here, <laughs> I, I, I do the prototypes for, you know, apple liqueur. Um, I, I just did a uh, root liqueur, which is going to be in that next cocktail. Um, you know, but everything, every, every cordial that's out there and that we're, we serve at the restaurant has to be made in-house. Um, we just, uh, our Hans, our head distiller, um, just made an absinthe cause we can't just go out and buy an absinthe. So, and it is awesome by the way. Um, so it has to, and it's, it's really an adventure because I love saying, okay, I want this to play off our port or our sherry or our bourbon or our vodka or our gin or our spiced rum. So I know those flavors in the profiles of the spices where I can build these cordials again to elevate and, you know, and just complement and not compete with those spirits. So. so you really, you're able to really work with those flavors. And the, you mentioned the absinthe, is that something that's only at the Breckenridge distillery restaurant or is that one we're going to see? Just at the Breckenridge distillery restaurant right now. It's um, it, I mean, it's in such small batches and for right now, the barrel aged Sazerac is, you know, I took it off the menu for over a year now, and then it was in high demand again. So um, it was put back on. You got to listen to your guests, listen to your guests, listen to the customers. And uh, so there it is. So we'll now, see. You, you all have always enjoyed those barrel aged cocktails. I know even from the early days of Breckenridge, when I, when I went out in the very early days to the Breckenridge distillery, you will always had uh, some the Breckenridge old fashioned. Uh, on tap, barrel aged. Uh, that's always been one of the big ones there, right? Yep. Um, you know, for me, it's all about like experience very much. So it's, I love smoke. I love fire. I love bubbles. I love suds from tropical cocktails. Um, it's just all I want. I want to see, see everybody smile. You know, if, um, you know, the, some, something's going out to a table or I'm doing an event and if I see somebody kind of go, hmm, I'm, I almost follow them to see what was wrong or was there something wrong or they just wasn't there. But if I don't see them go, oh, this is amazing. I'm like, you know, I get that like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you like? So then with, with, with regard to that menu or to special ones you do, what do you like to smoke? Where, when do you get the smoking gun out? When do, you know, tell us about that a little bit. Oh man, there's, there's so much things, so many things. If you like that essence of smoked cocktail, you know, of smoked cocktail in the nose, um, you, you know, I have, you can smoke almost any spirit. Um, I love the way it holds. It's just uh, the mouth feel, everything just changes. It's, you know, your, the, all your senses pick it up. Um, but yeah, gin, vodka, uh, this past summer, a smoked, uh, strawberry horchata, you know, that, that thickness just, it held it there. Um, you know, smoked Mai Tai is one of my favorites. Um, it, it just works out great. You know, when you smoked Mai Tai, you feel like you're, you know, having some pork and having a Mai Tai and it's all, you don't even have to have the pork. You're just right there with the, the cocktail. And it. I like it. I, I, that sounds really good. Now the horchata, what's in the uh, smoked horchata you were mentioning? What do you, what do you put Smoked horchata. So that's a, a, a our spiced rum based cocktail. And, uh, you know, uh, about actually exactly about a year ago, uh, Lich and I were going to Omaha for their first annual whiskey festival. 
And I thought it would be fun because we drove there. It'd be a seven hour, it was a seven hour road trip. So I pulled out all our notes. Okay. And which is, you know, he's, he's part owner. And uh, we, I was like, let's, let's see. We've both been there since the start. Okay. Him before me, but, and uh, I was like, let's go through all these uh, notes and stuff and see, quiz ourselves. And the spice rum came up. And uh, this is the history on this, this, uh, strawberry horchata, by the way. And th it said there were notes of uh, dehydrated strawberry in there. And I had no idea. And I thought it was the funniest thing that I didn't know. And uh, we both were just like, oh, so then coming up with that menu was like, spiced rum, I'm going to feature strawberry in that. So of course, you know, rice based and, you know, a big process of strawberries and it just, uh, uh, it's just one of those things. It's like one of those inspirations too, where something you didn't know, um, it just, it, it just clicks like that. So. Yeah. That, that rum is uh dynamite. Of course, the, uh, Reckon Ridge, oh, the spiced, uh, in fact, I think, yeah, right above, right above me, right there. There's some in the, uh, the cabinet. So we, we I do. Love the, uh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> We love the uh, Breckenridge Ridge Drama. Question coming in on warm cocktails. You know, we, we often think about cocktails being uh, on the rocks, cool. Uh, but, you know, you're in Breckenridge, Ridge, you're in Colorado. Are there are there some warm cocktails that you like to experiment with? And, and what are they? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, during this whole time we're in with more outdoor seating, um, this was the first year that I kind of – about a month ago or two months ago, had to dedicate a full, just, you know, hot cocktail menu because we had so many folks that we wanted to have outside in outdoor seating with heat lamps and just being cozy, you know, blankets and everything. So I brought back some of the, you know, just the top requests um, featuring everything from our spice drum, our spice whiskey, our bourbon, our port, um, our bitter, which is one of my favorite spirits that we do. Um, and, uh, th there's so much, but it, you can, uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll, or you can look it up. Actually, if you go to BreckenridgeDistillery.com, you'll see the whole warm winter warm up menu. But, um, as far as recipe recipes go, I'd be happy to share them with you. Excellent. And I'll put that link up there. Um, because, you know, we do think about a, a large, a large amount of the time, um, Cocktails being cold, but I think that is a good question. With warm, what so what what would be one of your very favorite warm cocktails then made with one of your spirits? Um, for hot spirit for a warm cocktail, warm, yeah, yeah. For a warm cocktail, I'm going to go back to the bitanilla, and it's our Breckenridge bitter, with uh, which is more of an amaro, a European style liqueur, aperitif, digestive. It's sweet. It has some dry. It has genipe in there that actually gets picked from our distillers up in Breckenridge. Uh, Genipede grows um, wild in high altitude altitude environments. Um, and then I just pretty much put together an apple cider and vanilla bean wow. cider together. So that sweetness, the apple and that bitter, that's it. It's the only ingredients in it. And uh, a nice healthy orange zest again, you know, so you get vanilla and that, that orange and that awesome aroma of that Breckenridge bitter up there. It's just, oh, I love it. I can just uh, just inhale it, not, uh, you know, just smell it and, and drink it, but it's just so beautiful. Yeah. That would probably be my favorite. That's That does sound amazing. Again, it's uh, Billy Keithley, Bourbon Blog Live. If you have any questions about cocktails, um, ask away or about the spirits, um, you know, just the base spirit, just that Breckenridge, any of your spirits, but the Breckenridge bourbon, of course, with that snow melt mountain water, the minerality that brings to both the spirit and then going that step further uh, with cocktails. Um, you know, what what do you like best about uh, just just mixing, you know, with with the spirits you're giving? What, what do you uh, what do you like best about just the, your your core spirits and what do they do unique to the cocktails? Well, it is it's you know, we get back to having just the best. It, going back to the water, okay, let's talk about the water because it's this is our new make. We are blending also, but which is a whole art in itself, okay? But uh, the everything behind what is put, in, put into 
the, the, the Breckenridge, I'll just start with the bourbon. I mean, you just put it up to your nose and it just, it's beautiful. You want to drink it. You want to sip it. You want to sip it neat. You want to sip, sip it with a, just one rock, you know, to open it up a little bit. It's, it's beautiful. Um, again, I'm very fortunate to, to mix with this. A lot of our, um, you know, our, our sherry finish, our port finish, the rum cast finish, there's, you get such a, um, a toasted or a vanilla stone fruit, uh, honey, you know, things like that. It's just, it's beautifully made, it beautifully made and blended. And the, uh, you do a higher proof uh, bourbon, which is, uh, what is it? 105. 105. 105. Uh, times you will use that versus the, um, the standard. Oh, I love our 105. And I, yes. I remember when it first came out, I was like, oh man, that's going to be oh, too much for me. And it was, I, it's a great sipper. And I mix it in, you know, between your classic cocktails, your Manhattans, your old fashions, uh, you know, using in a Sazerac, just, it's so well done. Tom, I'm just, yeah, it's I'm so good. Head, but it's ridiculous. It's so good. It's that booziness that comes through even more with the uh, with that that extra proof. Uh, of course, even at your uh, your standard proof, it's amazing. But that 105 really is uh, something very, very, very delicious. And I'm seeing that that rum cask is hitting the market uh, more and more markets now. You're seeing. Um, I'm hearing. I'm hearing people talk about it all over. It's just. It's so delicious. It's it's one of my favorites by far, which is hard to say because I mean I, a lot. Most of them are my favorites. Depends on what mood I'm in, and uh, again, if you're hosting people at your home, and you know you have guests over or, or behind the bar, you know if you you know you ask questions, and then you get to play with what what do I think they're in the mood for? What are they telling me that they want? And you, you deliver, and it's it's again experimenting and making sure everybody has a smile on their face. Absolutely, and that rum cask finish again is the is your bourbon finished in your own uh, rum casks yep. uh, for that little extra flavor of the rum. Any any particular cocktails that you've created with the rum cask finish you want to share? Yeah, there's there's been a bunch I've been working on. Um, uh, gosh, off the top of my head, I forgot which one I just put on the menu that was released less than two weeks ago. Um, but uh, I did for this, this past summer, uh, last year, did a rum cask with an oat milk and mole bitters. Um, it, it's a, it's just such a beautiful spirit. Oh, the rum cast one I put on the menu just hit me. It's called uh, May the Orchard Be With You. Again, a Star Wars reference, um, but it has pear. It has pear, it has apple, it has vanilla bean, and it just plays so well with this rum cast finish. Wow. Oh, and, and it's smoked. And it's smoked too. <laughs> and it's smoked. And it's smoked. The uh, the newest this uh, this two clans, the one that is uh, the bourbon and the scotch, is that is that one that you've been able to play with yet? Uh, not yet, but that will be. I'm gonna head up there on Friday, and I I, I will. Uh, it's it's kind of cool, really working close with the distillers because I get bottles and distillates that are not even labeled yet. And it's just like, here you go, or I'll ask for it. And then I'm like, oh, this comes to mind. This is my inspiration. This is what's going to happen with this one is what I see. Um, so that that I'm really curious about. Um, I know it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, then on Friday, we have the, Tom, you know it. It's coming out Friday. The sexy oil. The sexy motor oil. Yes, I've been. I've been no. That comes out this Friday. Sexy motor oil. So you all had the bourbon. Your bourbon finished in Breckenridge uh, brewery. brewery, not the distillery, but Breckenridge Brewery uh, beer barrels. What kind of beer was it that, that they finished it in? You know what? I, I'm not sure. I just found out uh, today, which I'm so it excited. Good. I think it's about 53 percent alcohol on it. Uh, I, I can't wait to try that either. So um, there's always something new popping up. So many new things. And Brian has been telling us about the uh, the two clans uh, since, well, during the pandemic, we've had him on several times on Bourbon Blog Live. But uh, 
I am now seeing an image up of the bottle on uh, Breckenridge Distillery.com. So excited, so many exciting new releases and always, um, always fun um, hearing what cocktails uh, Billy is mixing with. And if you have any questions for Billy here on Bourbon Blog Live, make sure you ask them down below and take a moment to like and share this video because we are really, uh, really thrilled for uh, Billy winning this uh, very special Icons of Whiskey Award for Bar Manager of the Year. And uh, a big congrats to you on that. Uh, very well deserved. And uh, and you have another you have another cocktail that and, and I love both of these. They're they both are so um, they're both great for different flavors and different uh, expressions. Uh, both the port barrel, which we started with port cask finish bourbon, and then the uh, PX, the Pedro Jimenez sherry cask finish. Oh yes, there it is, the um, maroon label. Uh, what are you going to make with this? So this is on the new menu. This is called Forged in Fire. Um, All right. All right. Not only a Star Wars fan, but of course, Lord of the Rings, um, Harry Potter, you know. Uh, so <laughs> uh, this one is with our sherry cast finish. So what I did was take two Luxardo cherries. I soaked them in our 105 uh, Breckenridge finish, and that is our high proof. So those were soaked. Um, I gave them a slight muddle, and I'm just talking a little squish. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Angostura. Okay, we're going to go back to more even classic here, Angostura bitters. A little bit of dash in there. I'm going to kind of swirl that around a little bit. And this is building right in the glass, which is another classic way to make cocktails. Um, then I am going to add some sugar because we're gonna brulee this on the bottom, okay? Might need a little more sugar than that. Building right in the glass. Then I'm gonna take my little torch. And if you can see that, it's bruleeing the cherries right inside of the glass, okay? And then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients, which is, this is a homemade root liqueur, and it is at the distillery. And uh, I do have it, uh, I make it for one other bar in Breckenridge. It's just exclusive. I'm not, there's no selling it or anything. The base of this root liqueur is our spiced rum. That's another thing I love to do when I'm creating uh, cordials and stuff for Breckenridge Distillery is the base of most of the, these liqueurs are our base spirits, whether it be bourbon or peach bourbon liqueur, um, uh, you know, the spice rum, the spice whiskey, the, the rum cask finished, all of it. So this is just going to be three quarters ounce of this root liqueur, okay? And if you don't have root liqueur uh, or want to make it, I can send you, again, a recipe. And um, uh, then I add just two ounces of the sherry finish. Again, I'm not adding ice right now. I can just smell the, the uh, bruleeing of those cherries and the sugar, just awesome. I mean, it's basically an old fashioned because again, you have all the, if I didn't have the, the root liqueur in there, it, you know, it's a classic way to make a cocktail, your sugaring agent, your bittering agent, which was Angostura and your spirit. Then I'm going to add the ice. Okay. And I'm just going to do, add that just like that and just incorporate it a tiny bit. And that's it. This is a sipper. This is a, the way the root liqueur, or even if you didn't have the root liqueur, with the sugar, the, the bruleeing of the cherries, with that Angostura and sugar, right when you smell it, you want to drink it. It's Amazing. Cheers. Cold, cold fire. And yep. uh, be careful. Make sure you have a tempered glass. <laughs> because when anytime you're using flames directly into a glass, it, it could shatter. So make sure yeah. it's it's stout. Yeah, make sure uh, it's a tempered. Te how do you how do you know if it's tempered glass? How do you know? I would read about it. <laughs> Just make sure that it says it is. It can it withstand. Be so you know, make sure it says yeah. it with it can withstand heat. So, so you're brewing it right into the glass. Just right into the glass. And keeping it right there keeps all the flavor, the aromatics, everything just as the spirit hits it. Big time. It's a. Yeah. 
you know, and this was a, a technique that, uh, you know, one of the people who inspires me is Jamie Boudreaux uh, from the Canon out West in Seattle. And he, he does it a different way with um, an atomizer and doing a flame like that. And I was like, huh, I could, I think I can work with that, you know? So again, you, you never, you never stop having, and never stop learning and experimenting inspiration, um, asking, asking for help or saying, huh, you know, I'll meet a bartender for, for, that's been bartending for two months. And I'll be like, I never thought about that. And I've been doing this for over 20 years. Yes. So it's so cool that everybody, it's just such a cool thing. Yes. And you, and I love what you're saying, your, your passion and your, just a, your desire to keep on pushing those boundaries. And, and you've done a great job with that to uh, continue to take these spirits to create new cocktails. Uh, what, what in general, what's, what kind of trends do you see? I mean, and, and I guess another question would be um, trends you see in cocktails and also uh, just, you know, trends out of the, the last 10, 11 months, has anything happened that, that you think will influence cocktails and what do you, what oh, do you think? Oh man, this is a, I have so many answers for this one. I mean, obviously it's, you know, between your to-go cocktails, your bottled cocktails, lower ABV that I think has been trending for the last two to three years, um, your Amaro's. Um, I, I, for me, I think a lot of the citrus, I think different citric acids are going to be used, different powders. Um, absor absorbic acid, uh, malic acid, just different, less waste, you know, for, right. for bars and restaurants. Um, you know, that, that's a big one for me. And also theatrical, I think uh, nice, from everything from no garnish to huge displays of just beautiful, extravagant garnishes, you know, um, I think especially when people get back to being able to sit behind a bar, they want that experience. You know, it's going to be like, wow, this is what I've been waiting for. This is this yeah. is beautiful garnish or, or just this aroma or, you know, the presentation. And, uh, you know, I, I think the, this citric acid is going to kind of play in a role. I have a bunch behind in the lab here um, that I've been messing with. I like I like those predictions, and I get as people do get back into bars, and hopefully we can more and more. But uh, whenever it's just becomes full on, we're all back. Uh, the ability and the desire for the consumer to uh, want to have a, a unique experience they've been craving, and also at the same time, the desire and the interest of the uh, the bartenders and the hospitality staff wanting to give everyone. And, and and for and for everyone, it just becomes that much more enjoyable to um, to have something that maybe even might have been considered over the top, but we're now we're looking forward to that, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, it's it's you know the guest experience, and you know it's just we're all, the whole industry is always evolving, and it it's by the hour, by the day, um, it, it's so exciting, and especially when you see people so into their craft. And just the ideas that come out there, it's, it's, it's one of the most amazing things to watch. It really is. Yeah, it is. And you've been a big part of the, uh, as a trendsetter and, uh, and just really, you know, uh, moving forward for uh, both uh, Breckenridge and just for whiskey and spirits and craft distilling. You're, you're doing great work there. I see um, uh, Brian Nolte uh, giving a shout out that's saying it's not only according to Whiskey Magazine but also to Yoda, <laughs> saying that you're that you're the best for a long time. Oh, that's so uh, no, we we appreciate you all so much, Bill. You're doing you're doing great work. We weren't able to do the uh, I forget when is the um when's the annual shot ski? I know that that didn't happen or did that happen this year? It didn't happen because of COVID, but. Yeah. It what is it usually in the September? Remind me when that happens. It's usually it usually was in January. January. Um, the last time we had it was December of 2019. 19, okay. So, right. and you know that's one thing that Lich puts together, and all the those proceeds and stuff go to Bre the Rotary Club. Right. People, and it always sells out, and it's you know ten dollars per person, and it all goes to Breckenridge. Amazing. That's great. Well, I don't know when we're going to have another one, maybe December. 
Hopefully. We'll we'll see maybe next January. That's let's just stay positive about it. Absolutely. Well, you're you're definitely uh you're keeping us positive with great cocktails, great cocktail ideas, and a lot of those cocktail recipes up on BreckenridgeDistillery.com. If you do happen to be uh, close uh, to Breckenridge, again, that uh, sexy motor oil comes out. Is it this Friday at the distillery only? Is that right? Uh, it, as far as I know, to my knowledge, it is. Maybe regionally, we'll, we'll get more. We'll get more info on that. I saw it in the email today, and I was. I was thrilled to hear about it. But if you do get to whenever you do, whether it's um, uh, in the in the near or distant future, definitely stop by, check out the distillery if you haven't already, and also the wonderful Breckenridge Distillery Restaurant, uh, where you can get uh, all these great cocktails and more. And the food is just divine. The whole the whole experience is something that's just um, there's nothing else like in the business. Uh, so um, hopefully hopefully we'll be back on see you soon too, Billy. I'm sorry, Tom. What was that last part? I said, hopefully we'll be back out and see you soon too, very soon. Oh, heck yeah! We hope maybe it'd be great to have a reunited, at, you know, at the Breckenridge Distillery or Tales of the Cocktail. I'll never forget memories of um, baking snow in New Orleans and 110 degrees yes. weather, and uh, you know, us, you know, doing ice luges between cars in New Orleans. I don't know if you That's remember fun. that. I oh, do yeah. vaguely. Um, <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh my gosh! But, yeah, you you made it snow in New Orleans, which uh, not everybody can do. But if anybody can do it, the Breckenridge Distillery uh, team could do it. So uh, those those snow cones were those those boozy snow cones. You even had New Orleans flavored. Were like uh, uh, bananas, Fosters, and all kinds. Those were all <laughs> right. They were all like New Orleans themed. It, we and we tried to keep Colorado color, so it was blue. We had blue snow cones, yellow snow cones, red snow cones. Some of them were swirled. Um, you know, it was it was really cool. People were just wanting to see again, have that experience of like, oh my gosh, it's snowing here right now with the, the shaved ice and then having a snow cone and uh, just making everybody happy. It was so cool. One of the best experiences. It was it was fun and and many more ahead. Uh, again, congratulations. To you, Billy, on uh, the Icons of Whiskey Bar Manager of the Year uh, from uh, Whiskey Magazine. And uh, definitely be uh, watching out for uh, Billy and all the great things. She work, Where's the best place for people to follow you? Is it through Breckenridge Distillery or is there a handle for you? Or what's the... Um... So, to, so I'm so new to this, but as of two days ago, I, yeah. uh, I, um, I, I'm on Instagram now with a, you know, a couple really you know good friends that you know, help me start it. So I'm so right. new. I am so new, but it's Billy Keithley, Liquid Chef. And that's my uh, Instagram. So there's, you know, recipes and, you know, things like that. Distillery.com is where you can find a, a lot of archives from the past, you know, 10 years and, yeah. uh, and stuff. So if, if anybody does the Instagram thing, make sure that you're patient because I'm, I just learned how to email not too long ago. I didn't know what CC meant. And uh, I, I still have to uh, ask Lich before I send something. I'm like, is this appropriate? Do, am I doing it right? And uh, it, it's it's true. So, but uh, BreckenridgeDistillery.com is where you can find out so much about all of, you know, uh, things that are going on with the menus, the you know, for dinner, the Breckenridge Distillery restaurant, um, everything that is encompassed with Breckenridge Distillery, BreckenridgeDistillery.com. Excellent. And definitely let's all help uh, Billy on Instagram get a few new followers. Hopefully we'll have a few after this, which is good. It's a good thing. I didn't even know you had an Instagram. So now I, I know. I can it, I, it happened like two days ago. That's days great. Ago. You, know? you gotta, you, 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 you gotta start someplace. I think you're gonna get a lot of followers at Billy Keithley Liquid Chef on Instagram. That's the place to look for her and for some of those recipes. BreckenridgeDistillery.com. Obviously, uh, we'll, we'll be up. This video will be up here permanently. Uh, and if you're not already following us on Facebook, Twitter, on YouTube, follow us there, and also make sure you listen to this podcast later. Uh, and uh, be sure you follow our podcast channel. 
Uh, one more question. Uh, you know, obviously, so many old school uh, cocktails have come back. I think that's part, been part of what the resurgence of uh, craft distilling. Uh, you know, the resurgence of whiskey and bourbon the last 10, 15 years, which we've loved following on Bourbon Block. Um, that's all, you know, come back. Is, is there an old school cocktail that you still think is going to make a big return or that you that you really love? It, it, maybe it's already returned, but just one that is on the book someplace that you're like, can't wait for this to be like the next big thing. Oh, man, that's a that's a, a loaded question there. When you go back to just changing one ingredient in your classic cocktails. Right. You know, whether it be, you know, your base spirit and just switching up one ingredient like a martini or a Martinez, um, your Boulevardier to your Negroni. Um, it's just one ingredient. That's what's so cool about these classic cocktails um, is being able to take one out or loving your base spirit and saying, OK, I'm going to put that bittering agent in or I might use this Amaro and, and again, compliment it and make it shine you know uh it's just that's a hard one i mean because those classics are there's so many out there um i i always play with my the the honest way to do an old-fashioned you know it's the old-fashioned way to make a cocktail spirit sugar bitter water you know so i don't know there's a lot i'd like to see come out and i always try to bring some back in you know the brown derby was always you know, yeah. an icon, um, you know, the bee's knees, meaning the best. Uh, I, there's there's so many. And like when if you go in the golden era before pro, prohibition, you're looking when bartenders were just so getting into experimenting and, and mixing things together in that in that era. Right. No, absolutely. It looks like uh, Brian is putting a vote in for the orange whip. <laughs> With the, uh, the, 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 the hat to the Blues Brothers, I think. Right? Yes. So Brian, for the past, I, I would say, year, he, he kind of, Brian never says, Billy, this needs to be on the menu. He just kind of, he's not like that. He's always like, be your creative self, do what you, I support you. He's he's amazing. But I can tell he, he was hinting in the past <laughs> maybe year and a half, like, maybe an orange whip. And I was like, where, where, where are you getting this orange whip? And I'm a Blues Brothers fan, and I never caught that before. Orange whip, orange whip, three orange whips. And, uh, and uh, so there's an orange whip on the menu right now for winter. Nice. And uh, I, I am using some orange peel uh, powder in that one. And, uh, you know, some heavy cream, our spice drum, and our Breckenridge vodka. Wonderful. And a couple other things, but you know, it's a little secret, a little yeah. secret sauce there from the orange whip. No, that is that is a good one. That sounds really fun. And of course, I should say that we we love the whiskeys, your your clear spirits, your gin, your your vodka, so so good in um, in cocktails. I mean, just really amazing stuff. Oh gosh, it's, they're amazing. <laughs> they are just it, just just they're so good. They really are. Well, hey, it's uh, Billy. It's so good to see you, and uh, can't wait to have a, a cocktail with you. Hopefully, in twenty twenty one, we'll get back out there and we'll uh, we'll have some cocktails, and and definitely we'll we'll post a few of these on bourbonblog.com along with this uh, interview. And again, congratulations to you. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. Bourbon Blog, Tom. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, oh, Billy. I'm like, where's my Oh, it's right in front of me. Sure. You've got to have a cocktail around there someplace. Forged in fire.